Hello everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 Creator World video. So this is episode 13, and we're working on two lots in this video. So the first one here is going to be the spa, and then the second one will be the ferry terminal, which is going to be quite interesting and in what most of this video will be dedicated to. But right now we're working on the spa, and I think I used the base game uh, rabbit hole because it just was the only one that kind of suited the world. There's not many spa rabbit hole options because a lot of them are like um, two in one rabbit holes. Like they, they like to combine the bookstore with the spa a lot. And then the other two spas were just like way too specifically themed. Like I think there was one for Lucky Palms and like one for some other world. They looked very kind of deserty and it just didn't really work. But this is the base game one and it's here on lot number 20 in um, the town center area. So of course, download links are in the description to both this lot and the ferry terminal. So you can check those out as well and add them to your game if you so choose. But yeah, this is a pretty simple uh, lot. So, you know, nothing too um, exciting here. It's just some bushes and landscaping basically. Uh, speaking of double or like two in one rabbit holes, I just came to realize that the hospital that I used is actually also the Science Center too. It's a two-in-one, uh, so I also have another Science Center. So this world has a few redundancies. There's apparently two science buildings and there's two restaurants because of the restaurant and office building combo and then the bistro I, I'm going to put in. Or do I know I already did that? Yeah, the bistro I put in. Um, that was the previous episode. Wow, I'm getting everything mixed up. But yeah, so there's a few redundancies, but anyway, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. But anyway, we're pretty much done with the spa here. Just a few more details, just a few small touches uh, around the building, and I think that's pretty much it. Just some planters, I believe, and now we're going to move on to quite an interesting project. Uh, I've never really done anything like this before. So this is built on lot number one. So this is at the very end of the wharf. And one thing I discovered when I was doing this is that I made this whole area, like the whole wharf area, way too high up above the water. It was, it ended up being way higher above the water than I thought it was. So I don't know if I want to like come back in a newer version, of, like in a second version of Plymouth Isle and change the height of this whole area, like this whole wharf area or not. I mean, if I did that, then I'd have to redo this lot. So I don't know how, I don't really know what I want to do with that yet, but Essentially, this is the ferry terminal, and this serves no purpose in the game other than just something to look at. Uh, so, I mean, I spend all this time making this completely non-functional lot. I mean, your sims can visit it, and they can walk around and and just look at things, but it doesn't really serve a purpose besides just looking cool, I guess. And uh, what I looked at for inspiration is the uh, ferry terminal or steamship terminal, whatever they like to call it, uh, in Nantucket. So that's what I looked at for this, and... I kind of based the, it off of it, based this off of that. Um, of course, it's not exact. This is a quite a bit. So this is on a much smaller scale, but um, I think it fits in. I mean, I think it, it looks pretty good. Now, there's not going to be a ferry. I'm not building a ferry because uh, I don't think it would look good. I think it would look probably pretty crappy. So, this is just the terminal. But you you could imagine the ferry coming. You know, you can see on the left there. I put the road up to where the ferry would dock. I do lower that area down quite a bit because right now it's like this massive, it's like way too high above the water level. So I do fix that. And also I turn these cars around because they're facing the wrong way. Because what I saw on the ferry terminals, at least according to Google Maps, what I saw on Google Maps is that there's like these rows, like these long rows, like a lot longer than what I have here. And all the cars will that are going on the ferry line up in these rows here. So that was what I was trying to do. Like, like that's how they wait to board the ferry. And then there's like a wraparound driveway that kind of like went around the rows of cars. And at the very farthest end was like this building, which I assumed was like the ticket office waiting area. I don't really know, but that's what I made the building in this uh, in this version here in The Sims. But yeah, that's pretty much the, the layout that's happening here. Um, but anyway, right now I'm just, uh, I'm actually going to make a few more changes to like the, the shape of the land and stuff. I also just put a few little office buildings around. So like I imagine like maybe like, I don't know, someone who's like in, like in charge of like making sure the ferries are coming on time or like checking where the ferry's location is or like the, 
person in charge, like the traffic controllers or whatever, making sure like all the cars are getting on the ferry in the right order or whatever, and everyone's following the instructions and directions. Like those are their office buildings. I imagine like, they have like little huts kind of. Um, that's just what I put in. But anyway, here, this area behind the building is going to be like the outdoor waiting area. So there's going to be some benches there. And then I'm going to build a staircase that goes down to the water where you could get into the ferry. I also had some fun placing in some road markings here with some yellow fencing. So I I do change them up quite a bit from what I do originally. But um, yeah, it's kind of fun because I never like make, you never like get to make roads in The Sims, you know? This is like a very different sort of thing. But you can see here, I'm kind of like outlining uh, like where cars can go, where they can't go. I also put like arrows down. I initially put the arrows going the wrong way because like they were going opposite of like the way that you know cars would be driving on the road. So I do flip it all around. Um, not yeah, I haven't gotten, I haven't done it wrong yet, but I will. So I do fix it. But yeah, essentially that's the layout we're going for here. So anyway, I just flipped the cars around. Um, Again, just using these cars from University Life because you can't place normal cars on community lots. I just don't know why. You have to like use these buy debug cars that are already in parking spots. It's very weird. It would be nice if I could just place cars wherever I wanted, but I did not end up keeping the sea of moving vans. I just have one in the end. So yeah, I thought I kind of overdid it, but here's why I put the arrows going the wrong way because you know, it's not the way that people would go if when you drive on the right side of the road. So. I do switch it around because it didn't really make sense because, you know, uh, this island is, uh, on this island people drive on the right side of the road, so you don't want to have this, sh like, have this, like, for some reason have them driving on the left side. It doesn't really make sense, so I do flip it around. But anyway, here I'm just uh, adjusting some things and some roofs and stuff, and I had to move this hut because it was kind of blocking the road there, but yeah, you can kind of see it coming along here and we'll get on to the building soon but this whole uh, project took a surprisingly long amount of time to do um, oh here's where I noticed that the arrows are the, not the right way around I was like what yeah so there I just flip them around so you enter on the right and then loop around uh, so yeah this is actually surprisingly time-consuming to do uh, you can tell by this episode being one of the longer ones um, you know it's like double the length of some of the previous episodes not the one directly before this, but some of like the like when I was doing like more rabbit holes, those went a lot faster. But building this whole um, thing from scratch was it was also kind of a challenge because I had never done anything like this before, and I was also trying to accurately replicate like what I was looking at on this on my like on Google Images. So yeah, it was kind of interesting project. Uh, I do completely change this area where the boarding area would be for vehicles to drive onto the ferry because as you can see it's way too far above water level. Um, looking at pictures of ferries, the uh, kind of like area that like lowers down that allows cars to drive on is like at, the, at water level on the ferry pretty much. You know it's not like high up so it doesn't really make sense for the that to be so high above the water level. So anyway here I'm putting in a boat dock so what I kind of imagined this to be for was like either like police boats or like coast guard boats or you know like the port authority of plymouth isle boats i don't know like that like these are like official kind of government boats that's like what i imagine these to be not like recreational uh boats kind of thing because like this is like um you know it's the ferry terminal so it's it's like a it's like um probably like government property or whatever where it's like property of like the port authority which is probably part of the government i'm probably overthinking this but that's what I was thinking about. So those are probably like, um, you know, some sort of police or like Coast Guard type boats, which I changed the color of them later too, but that's what the intended function of those boats is. Although they, I mean, I think your Sims can actually use them. I don't see why they couldn't, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, here I'm just kind of working on the ticket office. Um, that's pretty much all this building does. It has like a waiting area and like some cash registers where your sims could go buy tickets supposedly uh, in theory so yeah that's pretty much what this building is and just putting in some porches and railings and columns and stuff just all like the nice little details and things and also some roof uh, porch roofs there and kind of wanted to make it more like the um i don't know like new england sort of theme building so you'll see i kind of get like some shingles on it and uh, it's kind of like 
I don't know, like the colors look very, I don't know, the colors look very reminiscent of like New England kind of beachside buildings to me. But anyway, here it, I'm just putting the porches on little office um, huts kind of. So yeah, just putting some porch roofs on those as well. And yeah, so that's pretty much what's happening, I guess. Um, I don't know how exciting the rest of this video is, but I think we're going to get on to addressing the um, really high up loading area. I don't know. I don't really know the order I do things in, but I'm just adjust. Oh, I do the dock here. I get some stairs so your Sims can actually get to it because that, that would be good. Uh, so I just put in some stairs that just go from an upper level foundation down to the dock level because it, this kind of gives you an idea of how high up this lot is above water level because that boat dock there with those boats is pretty much down at water level and then you can see how many stairs have to go down to it. And the, also the ocean here is way too deep. I just like overestimated a lot of things when I built this area of the island. So yeah, I guess it's just the way it is. I, I mean, I can go and change it in a later version of the world, but um, that would mean I'd have to kind of redo this lot because it would be kind of, the lot would be way too high up then. So I don't really know what I want to do exactly with that. I mean, it's not terrible, but, or I could actually lower the other lots on this area, but leave this one higher up. I don't know, there's a lot of different options that I could consider, but that would be far in the future, probably, or not too, well, not far in the, not, I mean, that sounded like it would be way farther away than it would be. That would be probably a few months away. Um, that's not that far in the future. Okay, anyway, uh, so here I'm putting in uh, some trees and stuff. We're going to do a bit of landscaping, I guess, or maybe not. I don't know. I just kind of do things in all different sorts of orders. Okay, so I think right now is where I'm going to tackle the boat entrance or like the where you drive down into the boat so yeah I just remove this area and I lower it down so it looks a lot better uh, so that's basically what I'm doing right now and yeah and I also put a little boarding area for passengers too at water level so uh, people can actually supposedly get on the boat too it's not just for cars so yeah here I'm just bringing this down and yeah that looks a lot better already. I have to do some constrained floor elevation stuff to get all the foundation retaining walls to work with the sloped um, road. But the main reason I'm building this whole lot is even though it serves no function, it's just like it, I don't know, it makes it the island feel a lot more real because, you know, in, in most Sims worlds that are islands, you know, there's like, like think about like Isla Paradiso, you know, that's a whole island thing, but there's no place where anyone would get to the island. Like, the only ports are for either houseboats or small little, like, boats that could fit, like, maybe four people. You know, it's like, how, how did all the cars get there? How did all the building materials get there? How did, how does food get there? Like, how does anything that's larger than just a few people get to the island? Like, there's no sense of realism in that regard, which is something that I never really thought about until I started making my own island. And I thought, well, even if this is just completely decorative, it makes the island make sense because it's like, well, here's where, you know, people arrive to the island. They come here, you know, they can bring their cars. This is how all the cars get to the island. And, you know, this is how like maybe some deliveries get to the island. It's also the industrial port that I built. You know, you saw that probably in the industrial area episode. You know, it's like I want to have like these things that make the island feel like realistic, you know? So it's like, oh, well, that's how things get here. That's how people get here, you know, as opposed to everything just being ethereal and magical. Like, oh, yep, they just, they're just here. There's no explanation of how they got here. Everything's just here. I, I just don't like that so much. So that's why I'm building this just decorative lot because it just, it just makes sense. So anyway, uh, there's the new uh, boat entrance there. So you can see there's two different directions, an entrance and an exit from the ship or the ferry, whatever. I'm also putting in some no fishing signs because it's probably not good for people to be fishing where the ferry is going to be coming in to port. And yeah, just adding in just some more colored lines on the road just to say, hey, don't drive here, don't park here, that kind of thing, you know, like you'd probably have in real life. And also just doing some uh, recoloring of all the columns and stairs and stuff on these buildings because I haven't done that yet. But yep, doing that and making that look... Um, more finished off. So, yep, just going around and putting that on the building. So, yeah. And then I think we're going to move into some more details and stuff. Um, so, like some more landscaping, getting this building painted because it's still not painted yet, but we'll get there. So, 
also putting in some railings and stuff for the stairs and oh actually right now is where we're going to build the passenger entrance for the boat so the way that i did it is that no one can get here um or theoretically no one could get to this boarding area unless they go through the building where you where they sell tickets so you, you, you have to go through that building to get uh down this way so you can kind of see there's no way to get through i also put a fence on the other side so that's kind of makes sense and I did play test this a lot just because and when I had my sim come here to this like boarding area they actually jumped in the water and swam over to it instead of going through the building and around because apparently that would take longer because like they were like standing on like the ferry entrance area you can kind of see like where the cars would go I had him standing there and then I said okay go to the like passenger entrance and I expected him to like go I wanted to see him like get up go walk back up the hill go around go through the building go down the stairs nope he just jumped in the water and swam to there so oh well but uh you know in theory uh they would go through the building and down the stairs to this little entrance area or they'd wait probably in the waiting area outside and then once the ferry arrived and everyone else left like all the people on board debarked de parted, debarked, which that's not even a word, departed, um, or disembarked. Um, I kind of just combined depart and disembark into one word. Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, so once they've uh, departed or disembarked from the ferry, then the people waiting um, kind of in the waiting room or in the outdoor space could then go down the stairs and onto the ferry. So that's kind of what I imagined. Uh, imagine, that's how I imagined it working. Uh, so anyway, putting in some doors here for this building, some windows, all that kind of stuff so that, you know, there's some light in the building. Uh, the building, the interior of the building is not overly detailed. I mean, again, this isn't really meant to be like a lot that Sims are visiting all the time. It's just kind of here just for like decoration purposes. So, I mean, I do fully furnish it, but it's not like over the top detailed. I mean, we'll get to it. You'll see what I mean. But uh, just putting in some windows and stuff and just addressing this area here. Kind of like I put a stage on the very end there so that that kind of end part sits flush with the top of the foundation. So it means there's kind of this uh, ridge, this like flat edge that I didn't really want there, but there's no way to avoid it. So I kind of just recolored it to be the same as the um, asphalt color. And so hopefully it's not too noticeable, but you know, it's, it's not that big a deal. So anyway, here just putting in some deck material uh, just around the place. And we're moving on to the inside of the ticket office. So in here, there's um, a couple bathrooms, so a couple public bathrooms. There's also the ticket, like, little windows, the waiting area, and there's also, like, a kind of, like, break room, I guess, kind of area. Or I imagine, like, it would be, like, a room for, like, uh, maybe, like, ferry captains. Like, if they switch shifts, like, maybe someone, like, takes it, they can take a break here, you know, like, get some coffee or sit down, read a book, I don't know. Or, like, the people who work in the in the like ticket office they can leave their belongings in the uh, break room or you know that kind of stuff that's why i imagined it for because i just had that extra space so i was like why not just you know make a break room type of thing so anyway here we're working on the interior of the ticket office just putting in some uh wallpaper on the walls just like a nice wood kind of thing i guess and also doing a little back room there the bathrooms are over here on this side and then this is the um, break room area, kind of like back room. It's not, it's like in the front of the building, so it's not really the back room, but you know, it's like behind the office ticket, like the, the, um, like the ticket booths. So yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the off limits area to the public, I suppose. But anyway, putting some doors and windows on the little office, um, like buildings there on the corners of the lot and also doing some landscaping because why not do some landscaping, you know, getting in some bushes, some plants, uh, some ferns, some things like that, just kind of all around the lot, uh, you know, all that kind of good stuff, making it look pretty detailed. And I, this looks, I think that this lot, having this here at the end of the wharf really completes the way it looks, especially like when you're in map view or edit town, it kind of like, because like the wharf kind of ended weirdly, which was intentional. Like I, I left it that way because I intended to build this lot here all along. So, you know, I kind of just like left it end kind of bluntly there at the, <laughs> at the end of the wharf. Uh, because without like a retaining wall or anything because I wanted to build this here so I wanted to have a lot here and I believe I don't know what size this lot is I think it, it might be 64 by 64 or it's I think it's 64 deep but I don't know what the width is but it's a pretty big lot and this um the, I don't think I used all of it I used almost all of it I think it's like a tiny bit more space 
further out into the water that I didn't use, but you can see it's definitely a very large lot. And anyway, here we're on the inside of the waiting room, so you can see some benches in there, also doing some lighting on the inside here, and then also the bathroom lights and some lights in the porches, all that kind of stuff, and some lights in the, the fake upstairs area, just so the building kind of looks nice at night. And I also put in some street lights, of course, because it'd probably be a good thing to have some light so you're not, you know, in the dark when you're getting on the ferry. So I always put some lights around, and, um, oh, I kind of messed up this area, which was very annoying because I didn't want to redo the whole slope, so I kind of just had to fix it. But anyway, we're kind of nearing the end here. It's like, I don't know, a couple more minutes of building. So again, if you want to download these lots, you are more than welcome to. There's links in the description below. Uh, the spa that I did at the beginning of the video is on lot number 20, and this is on lot number 1. So uh, you can download these lots if you so wish and place them in uh, on the lots I built them on. Uh, so yeah, and right now just doing some more final touches. I think I'm going to do the bathrooms and like the uh, I'm going to do the uh, back room or the uh, spare. Um, what's it called? What did I call it? The um, uh, like it's not an employee lounge. Well, I've already forgotten the what I called it before. But anyway, um, yeah. So just putting the furniture in there and also putting in some lights uh, around and then also these are the bathrooms. Um, so just two bathrooms here and uh, just yeah, they're, they're perfectly identical basically. And yeah, so there's some screenshots coming up after this building portion, so I hope you stick around for those. You can kind of see everything, um, you know, more closely, kind of get an idea of what it all looks like when the camera's not moving around very quickly. And yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider checking out my channel and consider subscribing if you like what you see. And uh, there's plenty more videos like this um, on my channel as well. You can check out the series where I build this world from scratch. Well, actually, that is this series. You can watch the earlier episodes. There's a playlist on, of that on my channel. And yeah, so I'm just furnishing these little offices and uh, putting in just the final touches. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you all have a great day, and I hope that you enjoy the screenshots. Anyway, bye everyone!